welcome back today we will talk about musculoskeletal discomfort survey which is introduced and mainly used by national institute of occupational safety and health niosh okay so this method is very very preliminary in nature and it is a survey kind of thing and people use it at the basic level to identify the prevalence data of musculoskeletal disorder or discomfort so this method initially started as a questionnaire however right now this remain you uh, know this we use as a gold standard like we we use it for any uh, population any uh, occupation to identify the basic preliminary understanding of musculoskeletal disorder or discomfort so let us understand the procedure and the background of this particular method or tool so it's a self report musculoskeletal discomfort survey and it is generally accepted as a risk factor for musculoskeletal disorder so from this particular questionnaire or particular survey method we try to understand that what are the uh, body parts or body locations which is having a prevalence of musculoskeletal discomfort along with the associated causal factors so these discomfort measures are also used to evaluate the ergonomic interventions because it gives a direction or as a screening tool in the context of hazard surveillance to detect exposure to workplace physical stressors so we have we we know in in my earlier MOOCs course, I introduced you to varieties of musculoskeletal disorder stressors, mainly from the occupational perspective, we have major six stressors. So from this particular survey, what we try to understand, we get some indication, what are the stressors are causing for this type of musculoskeletal discomfort in a particular population or particular set of occupation okay so these are the major areas body parts that we will be looking for or we will try to get evaluated that where the problem is it may be single body part or it may be multiple body part so these methods or this particular survey that combined the body map okay so we'll talk about body map so uh, it is associated with a body map without body map we will not be able to use this survey and the rating scale to access discomfort in multiple body region so the body map used in NEOS studies are very close to standardized diagram that is used in distinguished various upper and lower extremity body region. We will go for it. We will check what this body part or a body mat map is all about. Okay. So mainly these are the body region, neck, shoulder, elbow, hand, wrist, okay so it's completely hand and this wrist okay we will talk about this together upper and lower back so here we are not discriminating the upper back separately and lower back separately we will be talking it as a whole trunk like you know upper back and lower back hip and thigh together knees ankle and feet together okay so these divisions we will be talking about we will try to understand the prevalence of musculoskeletal discomfort or disorder or pain in these body parts through this questionnaire. Now how do we define the location of discomfort? So musculoskeletal discomfort surveys collect information on the location of discomfort. What by reference to a specific body regions either 
we refer that body region. So, by reference to a specific body region or by use of partial or whole body diagram designating the specific regions to be assessed. Either we mention okay this part is spinning, this part is spinning or something like that. Okay. So, in a whole musculoskeletal system, we, we refer the specific body region or by using the partial or whole body diagram which has designation like in a body map specific regions to be assessed. So, we can have suppose we are talking about some place where we are expecting only upper body may have the discomfort or dis uh, no, uh, pain or body ache or something. So, maybe we can have a uh, figure where only upper body regions are uh, depicted or designated. Okay. Less commonly body maps are uh, no, shaded by respondents to identify the regions or discomfort. So, what we do? We ask those body regions to give a shade okay? or sometimes we ask them to tick also. The number of body regions targeted varies in relation to the interest of the study. So, it is not mandatory that same body map that is being used for one study and the for the other study the we, we will get the similar uh, pattern of responses in some cases maybe we are only interested to understand the neck region so we will be asking question towards only neck whereas in the other uh, study in some other case maybe we do not know that where uh, the problem lies or how do we assess it or all those things. So, in that case we will simply ask you please tell us that subject we are, we are going to ask them the respondent we are going to ask them that you specify where the problem is. So, both the cases same body map however, the responses are different. Two different display formats are used for identifying body parts in NEOS study. First one all of the 10 upper extremity studies partial body diagrams provide multiple views of designated regions of interest. So, multiple view maybe from the font side, uh, side view, top all these things it is possible or only a single attribute of discomfort is rated possible to target all regions of interest in a single integrated diagram with a space of recording rating uh, with each designated region. Okay. So, that way also maybe uh, we can collect data. So, both way we can collect data. Now, let us see how it looks like maybe this way for partial body diagram maybe we can say uh, from a front side and from a back side we are talking about shoulder region right neck shoulder region so this we can we can use this this type of diagrams okay together or if we are not sure the study objective says it it is like you know we are not sure where the target area is then maybe we can use this type of diagram where it is showing the whole body. Here it is very important thing for this diagram if the picture is from back side not from your font size. So, you are talking about uh, lower back or upper back not the chest. So, it is very important for us to know when we are talking about musculoskeletal disorder or discomfort the body map that we are going to refer is from the back side. The picture is from the back side of the human. Okay. Again uh, both uh, type of things here it is only shoulder and elbow re uh, neck region. Some cases maybe our target is elbow maybe we can do that kind of shading uh, depending on our requirement depending on the study we can have any figure. Okay. So, both the cases it is possible for us to use. Now, how do we talk about musculoskeletal 
disorder or how do we understand it how do we enquire it so mainly four terminologies rather we will talk about six more terminologies that we are trying to understand or describe this particular survey first is pain is there any pain is there any pain in your neck is there any uh, any discomfort in your elbow or wrist so pain botherness discomfort and problem so these are the major four terminologies that we are going to use for this uh, for describing the discomfort survey then what i would like to tell you about this particular survey is that it not only identify the problematic area it also try to give you an understanding the severity of that identified problem now how do we do that we use varieties of scale to understand what is the severity suppose a person who is working uh, in a computer or maybe in his or her work days reporting that yes he or she is having some neck problem neck trouble now the second person of like the uh, no maybe the other colleague he or she also is saying yes the problem the problem persists like you know they have neck issues now concern is we only know they have problem but if we can't discriminate the severity of the problem then we may not be able to go further in research or in analysis that how these severe uh, problems are coming okay so if you have a severity understanding of that particular problem along with the duration of exposure the personal risk factors the work habits and all then definitely you can try to do lot of statistical analysis like you know correlation association and all those things and try to get an understanding that what are the causal factor to have such kind of discomfort or disorder or problem okay so this neos discomfort survey also gives an an understanding about the severity of the problem the survey also asks about the presence uh, presence and severity of a problem in a specific location it also ask the respondent to qualify so severity in terms of a uh, particular scale maybe you are giving you are trying to give some kind of quantification right also it try to qualify what is the varieties of problem maybe it is a problem the problem what is it burning sensation is it some kind of stiffness or tingling the prob but all these three are problem right all these three three are uh, three can be categorized as the musculoskeletal disorder musculoskeletal discomfort right but through this particular questionnaire we can also try to understand what is the type of problem okay so symptoms categorization mainly we to, uh, look for burning stiffness and tingling now this survey talks about pain aching like you know uh, when we start with the questions stiffness burning numbness and tingling tingling so the survey begins with a single question so we should start somewhere right so it starts with a single question that screens for the presence of one or more among these six it can be one symptom or it can be two or three or all six symptoms six symptoms is very rare it is not really then uh, it's like it's very very severe case we may not get such cases maybe one or two okay so among all these symptoms in each body region so you have a body map you have six symptoms you ask where these problems are maybe you are getting an answer neck you have pain whereas in elbow you have tingling 
both are musculoskeletal disorder or discomfort indication right so you but symptoms are different type of musculoskeletal disorders are different right so from here you are getting an understanding the what are the possible varieties of problem are and what may be the causal factors for all those things and what is the kind of severity they have uh, in this particular case so this is this looks very simple tool however it's very very important and it gives very detailed screening of your population if you are talking about musculoskeletal disorder if your research is oriented on uh, the topic of musculoskeletal disorder now an affirmative once that is done then we go for more detailing so an affirmative response is or then followed by a rating on this particular problem one is duration from when how long uh, these problems are so duration we try to understand the duration frequency how frequently these problems are and then severity or intensity so mostly we use varieties of scale now the scale definitions or utilizations of scales are not fixed okay you based on your research interest you can use five point scale you can use yes no um uh, sorry not yes no uh, five point rating scale seven point rating scale maybe simple visual analog scale it's absolutely depend what is your research interest okay so i'll just give some example okay so here uh this is normally being used so you can use this as well as you can have your own scale when we are talking about discomfort duration that how long these discomforts are so maybe we can talk about a seven point scale where it is less than one year one hour one to 24 hours more than 24 hours two means one day to one week uh, one week to two weeks uh, maybe two more than two weeks to a month or more than one or like one or two months or more than two months or year so that way you can categorize the duration of discomfort okay so how long you are having this problem okay you said yes you have shoulder pain now from when you have this shoulder pain so you should have some some kind of description right so maybe you can use this description whereas if you your study objectives are um, uh, not going to help you uh, know uh, uh, is not in the direction of duration of exposure maybe you can have simple answer that yes you have a problem okay it's absolutely based uh, on your research objective it is not always that you should use this okay based on your idea your research objective similarly for the frequency um, maybe very rarely it is actually going to cross check that prevalence data is it point prevalence is it weekly prevalence or it is annual prevalence what type of prevalence it is so to understand that this type of data actually is going to help you so almost never very rarely sometimes frequently and almost always so you can understand the frequency of discomfort and the intensity intensity is like you know we can divide it as a no pain mild pain moderate pain severe pain and worst pain okay that way you can have or you can have one two three four five point scale where no demarcation or maybe um, uh, extreme left is zero that is no discomfort and extreme right is extreme discomfort or maximum possible discomfort and you ask them to rate it in five scale that is also 
possible. So, it is absolutely up to you how you are going to use it. When we are talking about this uh, NEOS survey, so several NEOS surveys also incorporate questions asking about medical follow up. You know, we do a check, we try to understand that how severe it is. So, do you take medication about it? Okay, if you have a neck pain, uh, do you take med medicine for it or not? So, we try to sometime understand that. Okay, and effects of discomfort on the performance. So, such questions are also included in this particular survey. Now, it is your choice that would you like to incorporate in your study or not. A series of questions to ascertain the work relatedness of this type of discomfort like onset in relation to current employment. Okay. So, suppose somebody is working in a particular job uh, for a year. Okay. Now, you can and right now the person is having um, neck pain. So, you can ask is this pain is uh, you know, started after you joined this particular job or it was before that also. So, maybe you can have some kind of uh, you know, indication whereas it is not confirmatory part. Okay, you cannot confirm that only because of the, this job uh, they, he or she is having the problem. Now, for that you need to go more detail, but you can have some kind of indication or prior traumatic. So, uh, it may happen you had an injury, uh, maybe an accident or some bigger trauma and that may get aggravated because of your job. So, you really need to identify where the problem started because a weak muscle group or weak musculoskeletal system will respond very easily or will be uh, will get more effect you know, um, from the occupational hazard or those stressors. So, if your muscles are weak, if your musculoskeletal system is weak, it is more uh, prone to develop such kind of symptoms. So, if you have injury beforehand, then you, uh, your uh, you know, frequency, intensity, all these things will be, will get aggravate. Okay. So, these type of information also we will get from this particular survey. The case definition most commonly employed by NIOSH requires satis, uh, no satisfaction of all the following criteria. First, discomfort within past year means last one year. What is the kind of discomfort? Discomfort began after employment in this current job. No prior accident or sudden injury and discomfort episodes occur monthly or the duration exceeds a week. So, such cases only you take it for more detail. So, here when we try to understand the who are going to be part of my study like who are going to be subject of my study in that case we create the inclusion and exclusion criteria. So, if we talk about musculoskeletal discomfort survey from NIOSH we will take only those healthy human being who is not having any prior injury because if you are having prior injury you are already in a uh, vulnerable zone, right? So, you will not be able to give uh, uh, proper, we will not be able to get proper data or validated data. So, that cases we will not take. Maybe the uh, specifically when we are talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, pregnant women, okay? So, for them, the typical responses are different right like you know they are more vulnerable towards musculoskeletal disorder. So, for, for a common survey or for a particular uh, workplace if we try to do maybe we will exclude them from the original study. Maybe we can have separate study for them but we will not include those uh, 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 no subject to in, uh, in your study. Also, 
if the person is under some complicated medication or some kind of medication which may have an extra impact on the musculoskeletal system in that case also we need to exclude those subjects so before we start any such survey we should select our inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, for these subjects to to take part in the uh, neos musculoskeletal survey uh, discomfort survey okay so that is very important also physical examination can be conducted as an additional step because if already there is some physical disability physical discomfort they may not be as same as the other person right so in that case we can have a separate study for them but not in the uh, target population uh, not as a target population okay so we can have this type of uh, prerequisite to start the musculoskeletal discomfort survey so um, what is the kind of quality we will get so discomfort survey need to be uh, practical to use so this quick and easy to administer very easy uh, if you have some basic understanding of ergonomics and the musculoskeletal uh, disorder or discomfort you can easily use this particular tool uh, with a variety of population a very important thing with variety of population so maybe literate person also can participate illiterate person also can participate uh, a person from the low socio economic background also can part participate uh, per people from very high socio economic background also can participate children can participate uh, elder can participate uh, adult also can participate male can participate female can participate so the range is very high it's very easy so uh, so any case you can use this particular uh, method now here one important thing is it is readily analyzed why because it gives only the is it present or not if it is present at what degree right so you can have very easy calculation so musculoskeletal disorder the the thing is it is not we cannot we may not have it on the spot right it takes time to develop so if you are saying yes today you have a neck pain definitely the causal factor is not immediate it must have started many years okay it takes time to settle this particular problem to set okay so from this particular type of survey whatever data we are getting we can easily convert them into percentage and it is very easy for us to get an understanding and analyze the data they also need to demonstrate accept acceptable psychometric properties reliability and validity it is tested uh, for this type of survey and it is proved that it is very is like it is very reliable and validated method for any occupation for any age group for any um, socio economic background for any cases okay so you can use it now uh, if we try to summarize it, we would like to say this particular survey of musculoskeletal uh, discomfort vary widely among many dimensions. The time frame for assessment, that when it is being assessed, assessment of qualitative uh, aspects like intensity, temporal characteristics and all scaling methods employed from a binary scale yes or no the spelling is wrong yes it's yes okay yes or no choice of you can have 
box scale along with it uh, the derivation of summary indicates the discomfort because once you summarize it you gives uh, it gives an understanding about your discomfort and near survey is sensitive to wide range of physical stressors across many occupation so this is very important so you can uh, it, it's like you, you can use it from a to z category so it's very very easy so that's all for um, neos musculoskeletal survey we will take another uh, discomfort survey that is the dmq dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire in next class thank you mm -hmm.